Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series, so we're going to be doing partial fraction decomposition. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We're going to do an introduction of what it is. So let's say we have two fractions like this and we want to go ahead and combine them. Well, in order to combine them, we need to create a common denominator, right? So in order to create a common denominator, I'm just going to multiply by both each other's um, denominators. So I'm going to multiply this one by x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. And I'll multiply this one on the right by x plus 3 divided by x plus 3. That way we create a common denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply this through. First, we're going to get x minus 2. And we can go ahead and combine the denominator. So that's going to be x squared plus x minus 6 plus, and that's going to be 2x plus 6 when I distribute that 2, and we get the exact same denominator, right? So the point of creating a common denominator is so we can actually combine them. So we get x minus 2 plus 2x plus 6, all divided by that same denominator of x squared plus x minus 6. And of course, our last step is to simplify that down. So here we get x plus 2x is equal to 3x, and then negative 2 plus 6 is going to be equal to 4, divided by that whole denominator. Well, our question is, what if we wanted to work backwards? So what if we're given 3x plus 4 divided by that whole thing, and we want to break this up into two separate fractions? Well, let's go ahead and work backwards. So like we said, we already know how to factor the denominator, and that's always our first step. So I'm going to factor this into x plus 3 times x minus 2. And so how we do this is we know this is going to be equal to some scalar over x plus 3 plus some scalar, so I'm going to call it b, over x minus 2. And just looking back at the original problem, we already know that a is going to be 1 and that b is going to be equal to 2. And I can show you that right here. a over x plus 3 is going to be 1 over x plus 3. b over x minus 2 is going to be 2 over x minus 2. The question is, how do we actually solve for it? So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. So we take our equation, which we just copy and pasted here. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this entire equation by x plus 3 times x minus 2. So notice what happens here on the left side. That entire denominator cancels out. So we're left with 3x plus 4 is equal to, now with our a term, only the x plus 3 cancels out. And so that means the x minus 2 is going to be left over. And with that b term, the x minus 2 is going to cancel out. And we're left with x plus 3. So let's go ahead and solve this through. So 3x plus 4 is going to be equal to, and distribute that a. And then we're also going to distribute that b. And what we're going to do is combine common terms. So I'm going to combine my x's. So I get a plus b times x plus, and then combine my scalars. And so notice that we have an equation sign here. So we want these two, so we want the left and right side to be exactly the same. So that means my x terms have to be completely the same, and my scalars have to be completely the same, aka I'm going to go ahead and set those two equal to each other. So 3x needs to be equal to a plus b times x, right? And what we can do is divide out the x on both sides. So we get 3 is equal to a plus b. Or you can think about it, you just want the scalars to be equal to one another. And then, of course, we're going to have that 4 has to be equal to negative 2a plus 3b. And now we're going to go ahead and solve. So first I'm going to solve for a. 3 minus b is equal to a. And we can use that and plug it into this equation over here. So negative 2. And we're going to multiply by what a is equal to, which is 3 minus b. And now we just have an equation that's only in terms of b. So I get negative 6 plus 2b plus 3b. Adding over that 6, I get 10 is equal to, and that's going to be 5b. And divide both sides by 5, I get b is equal to 2. And now we can go ahead and use this in the other equation. So 3 minus our found value of b, which is equal to 2, is equal to a. And so we get 1 is equal to a. And so this is how we set it up. And so that means our original equation, 3x divided plus 4, all divided by x squared plus x minus 6, is going to be equal to a over x plus 3, so we get 1 over x plus 3, plus b, which is 2, over x minus 2. And that's how we can split it up. So what is the point of doing this? It's the question, let's ask the question, which is easier to integrate? So here we have our original term on the left side, and we have our factored form on the right side. Well, if we go ahead and integrate the right side, we get the natural log of x plus 3 plus 2 times the natural log of x minus 2 plus c. That side is going to be much easier to integrate, which is the point of partial fraction decomposition. So let's go ahead and try one. We're going to go ahead and rewrite this. And of course, our first step is to always factor the denominator. 
So when I factor this, I get x um, minus 4, x plus 2, dx. So let's go ahead and set up partial fraction decomposition. So remember, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to multiply the whole thing by the denominator. So x minus 4, x plus 2. So on the left side, we get both those terms cancel out. So we get 2 is equal to a times x minus 4 cancels out, and we're left with x plus 2 plus b. And then here, we're going to get the x plus 2 cancels out, so we're left with x minus 4. So let's go and rewrite this. 2 is equal to ax plus 2a when I distribute that plus bx minus 4b. So let's go ahead and combine our common terms, a plus b times x plus 2a minus 4b. Notice here that we have zero x terms. So what that means is that we need all our x terms here to equal zero. And then we need our scalars to equal two. So let's go ahead and set up our two equations. First, we have a plus b has to be equal to zero. And that's super nice because then a is just equal to negative b, right? And now with our pink ones, our scalars, we get 2a minus 4b has to be equal to 2. So let's go ahead and plug in what we found a was equal to, which was negative b. So here we get negative 6b is equal to 2, or b is equal to negative 1 third. And plugging this in over here, a is equal to negative b, and b is negative 1 third. And so here we get a is equal to positive 1 third. So let's go ahead and rewrite this in our integral. We have that this integral is going to be equal to, and so we get our a, which is 1 third, divided by x minus 4, and that's going to be minus b, right? Or minus 1 third, because it's a negative. And then x plus 2, dx. So here, what we get to do is just take the natural log. That's the scalar multiple. It just hangs out, x minus 4, and that's going to be minus 1 third, x plus 2, and then plus some constant c. And if you wanted to combine it, you totally good, could, because they have the same scalar. We can use natural log rules which is where when we subtract, we actually get to divide them. And again, if you really wanted to get into it, this becomes the cube root because the scalar becomes the exponent, right? And that right there would be our solution. So that's how we can use partial fraction decomposition in order to help us evaluate the integral. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one. So here we're going to take this, and of course we're going to go ahead and factor the denominator first. So when I factor it, I'm going to have a 2x, and I'm going to have an x dx plus 1 minus 2, right? That's how I factor that out. And so let's set up our partial fraction decomposition. So we get 2x divided by our entire denominator. So that's going to be 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 is equal to some scalar a over 2x plus 1 plus some scalar b over x minus 2. Now we're going to multiply the whole thing, and I'm not going to write it out this time, but we get 2x is equal to a. 2x plus 1 will cancel out, so we get x minus 2 plus b. 2x plus 1 because that x minus 2 cancels out. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. So here we get ax minus 2a plus bx. Oh, and that's actually going to be 2bx, right? 2bx plus b. So I'm going to rewrite this. This is going to be 2x plus 0, right? Because our scalars are all equal to 0. And here we get a plus 2b multiplied by x. And then our scalars are going to be negative 2a plus b. So let's go ahead and see what's equal to each other. Our x terms are going to have to equal 2, and then our scalars over here are going to have to equal 0. So here we get a plus 2b has to be equal to 2, and then for our other equation we get negative 2a plus b is equal to 0. It doesn't matter which one you plug in where. I'm just going to go ahead and add this 2a over and solve for b because that one's equal to 0, and I think it'd be nice to plug in. So here we get a is plus 2 times what we found b, which is equal to 2a, is equal to 2. So here we get a plus 4a is equal to 2. 5a, right, if we combine that, is equal to 2. And that tells us that a is equal to 2 this. So let's go ahead and plug it in over here. b is going to be equal to 2 times what we found for a, which is 2 this. So we can see what b is going to be, which is 4 this. So let's go ahead and rewrite our integral. So we're going to take it and separate it with our partial fractions. We get a, which is 2 fifths, divided by 2x plus 1, and then plus our b term, which is 4 fifths, and we're going to divide that one by x minus 2 dx. So here we get that scalar multiple of 2 fifths times the natural log of 2x plus 1, but we need to divide by that scalar of 2, right? And then plus, and that's going to be 4 fifths, natural log of x minus 2. Nothing we need to do there because x minus 2 
plus some constant c. So if you wanted to simplify that, you totally could. That becomes 1 fifth natural log of 2x plus 1. And then nothing really changes with this natural log of x minus 2 plus c. And that right there would be our solution. So let's go ahead and try a trickier one. First, that we have this as a definite integral, which we know what to do there. We plug in upper minus lower once we integrate it. But notice we're also going to have multiple terms in the denominator. So let's go ahead and rewrite this denominator so we can see what's happening. So we got that x minus 1. So that's going to be x plus la, 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 minus 5 and then x plus 4, right? dx. So like I said, we can do it with multiple terms. We're going to go ahead and set that up. This is going to be equal to a over the first term, x minus 1, plus b over the second term, x minus 5, plus c over the third term. And if you had more, you would just keep going with d, e, f, or whatever scalars you like to use. So here we're going to multiply everything by the denominator. So on the left, we get 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 is equal to a. And notice now we have two terms there. And notice here, only the x minus 1 cancels. So we have x minus 5 times x plus 4 plus b, the x minus 5 cancels, so we're left with x minus 1 times x plus 4, and then plus c, the x plus 4 cancels, x minus 1, x minus 5. So here's what you're probably thinking. Oh my gosh, I have to multiply those all through. I'm going to have three equations I'm going to have to solve for. It's totally doable, and you could do it if you want to, whatever you prefer, but I do have a shortcut for us, which I'm going to go ahead and let us use. So here's the first shortcut. Plug in one of the zeros. If I let x equals 1, notice what's going to go to 0. Plugging in x equals 1, this whole thing goes to 0, and this whole thing goes to 0, right? So let's plug it in. So we get 3 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 5 is equal to a, and that becomes 1 minus 5 is negative 4, 1 plus 5 is equal to 5, and then when I plug in 0 to those two, that's going to be 0 plus 0. So here we get 10 is equal to, and that's going to be negative 20a, and so dividing both sides by negative 20, we get negative 1 half is equal to a. And I already found our first term instead of having to multiply all these out, set it equal to the left side, blah, blah, blah. So now we're going to go ahead and let x equals 5. So that means this term is going to go to 0 and this term is going to go to 0. So when I plug that in, we get 3 times 25 plus 2 times 5 is 10 plus 15 is equal to, and that's going to be b times 4 and then times 9. So on this left side, we're going to 75 plus 15 is 90. So 90 is equal to, that's going to be 36b. Dividing both sides by 36, we actually get that b is equal to 5 halves. Okay, and then finally, we're going to let x equal negative 4. So the terms that are going to go to 0 is this term, this term, and so that leaves us with c. So let's plug in negative 4. We get 3 times 16 is equal to 48. That's going to be minus 8 plus 5 is equal to, all those go to 0, and then we get c times negative 5 and negative 9. So on this left side, we get 45, which is going to be equal to 45c, and dividing both sides by 45, we get c is equal to 1. And so notice here, we got all of our terms, and I think that saves us a ton of time. And going back to our previous problems, you totally could have done that. So for example, right here, if we plugged in x was equal to 2, so on the left side, we get 2 times 2, which is equal to 4, is equal to b, and then 4 plus 1. So 4 is equal to 5b, and then I divide both sides by 5, 4 fifths is equal to b. And that's the exact same answer. So you can use this shortcut every single time. Sometimes there are some cases where it doesn't work, and it is more helpful to do this long way, but whichever way works is going to be probably the best way to go. So now let's go ahead and set up our new integral. So here plugging in, we get a negative 1 half, and that's divided by x minus 1 plus b, b is 5 halves, and divided by x minus 5 plus c, which is equal to 1, divided by x plus 4, I'm just plugging it in, dx. And remember, this is a definite integral, so this is being evaluated between 2 and 4. So let's go ahead and do this thing. Here I get negative 1 half natural log of x minus 1, plus 5 halves natural log of x minus 5 plus 1 times the natural log of x plus 4. And this whole thing is being evaluated between 2 and 4. So I'll go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So notice natural log of 1 is going to be equal to 0. So both of these go to 0. And here we get negative 1 half natural log of 3. 
plus the natural log of 8. And now we need to distribute this minus sign to both of these terms. So minus 5 halves natural log of 3 minus natural log of 6. And if you wanted to, you could simplify that one more time because we can go ahead and combine um, negative 1 half and that one. So that becomes negative 6 divided by 2 or negative 3. So negative 3 natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 8 minus the natural log of 6. And that right there without a calculator is our final solution, but you could also plug it into a calculator. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.